Good evening to you all and welcome to our second uh, regular council meeting in the month of January 2021. I want to thank the council members uh, for being present this evening. Uh, as Will noted just a few minutes, we are in a different uh, mode this evening. So uh, we'll begin our meeting, though, by our regular uh, uh, order, and that would be to ask the clerk, if she will, to do a roll call at this time. Ms. Gibson, are you available to do a roll call? Okay. Um, while she is getting Mr. set up, Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, this is Rodney, yeah. town manager. Um, Ms. Gibson should be with us pretty soon. She needed to um, do some um, swearing in of staff, so okay. she should be back with us any moment now. Okay not i believe that's something i could probably do myself but i'll wait a moment uh, for her i would say go ahead and proceed Okay. Mr. Mayor, and um, I will let her know that that has been done already. Okay, very good. Yeah, so if you will, um, please answer when I call your name. Obviously, I'm Ken Marshman, the mayor, present, and uh, Ms. Beringer. Here. Mr. Vance. Present. Mr. Dellinger. Here. Mr. Singleton. Here. And Mr. Matthews here. Okay, thank you. I uh, declare that all members are present and available for the meeting this evening. So um, the meeting this evening is being conducted as a remote meeting pursuant to North Carolina Section Law 2020-3. Be reminded that whenever a council member cannot be seen on the screen, that member will identify him or herself by name prior to asking questions and participating in deliberations or making motions or proposing amendments and voting. So that will be the um, process for our virtual meeting. At this time, I'm going to ask you if you can stand where you are. I will uh, lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance uh, to be followed by an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. This evening for our invocation, uh, I believe and uh, think that he is with us, but uh, it's been my privilege to... Uh, contact uh, one of the police department chaplains through our police chief, Mr. Dwayne Calvin, who uh, is slated and scheduled to lead us in our invocation this evening. So Mr. Calvin, are you available for us? Yes, Mr. Calvin, can you hear me okay? Could you unmute yourself? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I just uh, introduced you. You're one of the uh, uh, chaplains with the uh, Garner Police Department, and I'm deeply indebted for you to join us this evening. And if you will at this time, please, sir, uh, would you lead us in our invocation? Certainly. My pleasure. Let us pray. Dear wise and loving Father, uh, first, let me just say thank you. On behalf of all who are gathered here today, thank you for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for your care of the town of Garner and for the measure of health that we experience. And uh, we need to definitely fulfill your callings. And we come before you with a great task tonight. But we first want to start by saying thank you and inviting you into this meeting. And we're praying that you would grant us wisdom to understand and to govern well, a sense of well-being and an understanding of the true needs of the people 
and that we would have a spirit of teamwork and unity uh, to conduct the tasks that you have before us tonight. Praying that you would help us to have confidence in our decision making. And then this, when it's all said and done, that the right things will be done, that the right things will be said, and that ultimately you'll find glory in the labor of everyone who's gathered here tonight. We thank you in advance for your presence, and we look forward to a great evening of understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Calvin. Uh, probably should say Reverend Calvin, I guess, for uh, for leading us. And thank you for uh, your volunteering with our police department. It uh, means a lot to certainly to me and the council and also, I'm sure, to the police department. So thank you again for using your time to come and lead us. Okay, at this time, um, I'd like to uh, share some, some, some comments that will be part of the guide for our, uh, for our evening meeting, even though this relates to a particular section. So there's an online form that's available for persons to participate in the meeting or to submit written comments on items not included on the agenda. As far as I know, no speakers have signed up at this time, but if there's anyone who would like to make a petition or comment, uh, now would be the proper time to do that. And I would ask uh, the town clerk if she's available, if uh, she has any indication of any persons who have either signed up or submitted uh, any comments. No, sir, we've had no one sign up under petitions and comments. Okay, thank you so much. So we will move along in our agenda. And the next item, uh, council, is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, before I ask you to vote, please note, if you will, that the uh, staff has requested that item, uh, I believe it's 1-1, one, one, yeah, contract approval for construction drawings at Meadowbrook and, and Juergen. That item has been removed from the agenda. So uh, I wanted you to know that as I will now entertain a motion for adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, so moved by Mr. Uh, Matthews, and I've forgotten who seconded that. Was it Mr. I did. Great. Okay, Mr. Singleton. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, we will now vote on adoption of the agenda, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Berenger. Ms. Berenger, can you? You need to unmute. Sorry, sorry, I. Councilmember Dellinger? Aye. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. And Councilmember Vance? Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the agenda has been adopted by the council for this evening and we will proceed accordingly. Uh, the next item on the agenda uh, is under the heading of presentations and I'm not aware of any, so uh, I will ask of council and the clerk if there are any that I am not aware of. I'm okay. not aware of any, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Gibson. Uh, the next item is the consent agenda. Uh, all of the council members should have uh, received that and noted the items on there. So uh, uh, unless somebody uh, feels the need to pull an item from that agenda, I will entertain a motion that we approve the consent agenda. So move. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Vance and seconded by Mr. Matthews. and. I will ask uh, Ms. Gibson to call the roll for approval of the consent agenda. Councilmember Dellinger? Aye. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Vance? Aye. And Mayor Pro Tem Berenger? Aye. Okay, thank you. So the consent agenda has been approved, and uh, thank you, uh, Council, for that. All right, uh, we will move along now to the uh, next item on our agenda, which will be uh, some public hearings. And in conjunction with those, I need to uh, provide some additional information. Um, if she hasn't already done so, uh, our clerk will probably leave the meeting at this time to swear in witnesses for the quasi-judicial hearings for items H1 and H3. For all public hearings on the agenda, Written comments may be submitted up to 24 hours after the public hearing. Uh, please submit written comments by email to sgibson at garnernc.gov. Of course, that's the email address for our town clerk. 
Under state law, the parties are entitled to a fair hearing. Any council members have a fixed opinion prior to the hearing that is not subject to change, or do you have any, have you had any ex parte communications or had any close familial business or other associational relationship with an affected person or have a financial interest in the outcome? If so, would you so indicate at this time? Okay, hearing none. Uh, let me mention uh, at the beginning, this is a fact-finding hearing and only competent material and substantial evidence that is not repetitive is allowed. Only expert witnesses based on training and experience may testify as to impacts on property values, traffic safety, or noise levels. Council members are only allowed to receive factual information during this hearing and are not allowed to discuss the case outside of the hearing. So at this time, uh, we will call the initial case, CUP SB 2012, Sod Building Phase 2. Uh, and I will call on um, uh, our planner, Ms. Allison Jones, if she will, to uh, make her presentation at this time. Good evening. Good evening. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mayor, if I may, Jeff Treisenberg, Planning Director. Um, staff members were not able to get sworn ahead of time. Um, so if we could have Ms. Gibson swear us in, that would be great. Okay, Ms. Gibson, are you available to do that at this time? Yes, sir. If staff could please raise their right hand. Do you solemnly, sincerely, truly declare and affirm that the evidence you provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. And I know, uh, uh, Ms. Jones, you obviously have just been sworn in, but I must ask you, uh, do you uh, do you consent to uh, the remote meeting in which this is being conducted? I do. Okay, thank you very much. If you will, uh, proceed at this time. Okay, let me share my screen. I'm sorry, guys. There we go. All right. So I um, am presenting a sod building two, excuse me, sod building phase two, CPSP 2012. Applicant and owner is Briar Haven Properties, Matthew Sod, and is located at 100 Brick Steel Lane. The track size is about three acres. The Planning Commission heard this case on at their December 21st meeting and is before you guys, you all tonight, excuse me. As I previously mentioned, the track size is three acres. The proposed use is a flex space office warehouse. Um, there's no minimum lot size and the front side, excuse me, the front um, setbacks 30 feet and the corner is 30 feet as well and the rear is a zero and size zero. And here is an overall picture of the site plan. The building will be constructed of brick and metal siding. There's no open space required for this project as it is a commercial development. Landscape and buffer requirements. This plan is meeting the requirement of 10% with existing vegetation to remain undisturbed. The perimeter buffers, the 70 and a half foot perimeter buffer for the east and south side of the project. The street buffer, the 15 foot buffer along Brick Steel Lane and Rainer Road frontage. Brick Steel Lane will have an enhanced street buffer for screening, and the street trees are being provided every 40 feet of average along Rainer Road in Brick Steel Lane. Lighting. Lighting for this site has been shown in conformance with the UDO, as well as meeting staff recommendations for LED fixtures. All fixtures have zero up light, low glare, and warm white light, exhibiting a color temperature of no more than 4,000 K. The inspections department, together with the fire, review and improve the plan. Of 
Parking is based on one per every three square feet of gross floor area and one per every two employees on max shift, but not less than one per 5,000 square feet of gross floor area. They're required to have 12 parking spaces, one accessible, and they're providing 12 with one accessible. Environment and floodplain. Stormwater management. Sod building phase two is a commercial development site that is not located within the watershed protection area. This site is subject to stormwater qu water quality requirements for nitrogen only. A previous study was done for Water and Business Park East to demonstrate that containing water would be detrimental to downstream water set, watershed. So no water quantity is required at this site. The development of this site remains under 3.6 pounds per acre per year threshold for nitrogen, and therefore no offset payment is required with development of the site. Water and sewer. Connection to City of Raleigh public sanitary sewer and water system will occur through existing infrastructure. Roads and sidewalks. The building will be served by a single driveway off of Brickstill Lane. Both frontage streets are currently built to their ultimate section on Brickstill Lane. A sidewalk is intended to only be installed on the north side of the road and is therefore not required along the site frontage. Sufficient sidewalk to provide a connection from the building to public sidewalk on the north side of the street will be included in this development. Street lighting will be installed along Rana Road. The 2018 Garner Forest Plan does not provide any roadway, bicycle, or pedestrian or transit improvements along Rana Road. This project, as proposed, may be found in conformity with the transportation plan. A review of the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Resources Comprehensive Master Plan revealed no plan recommendations in this project area. Therefore, this project, as proposed, may be considered consistent with the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Resources Comprehensive Master Plan. Site plan conformity with the after sufficient review and plan revision, staff finds that this project as proposed may be considered consistent with the regulations of the UDO so long as the following project specific conditions are met. Prior to the issuance of building permit, the payment of engineering inspection fees shall be paid to the town of Garner. And prior to the issuance of building permit, payment of public utility fees shall be paid to the city of Raleigh. The Planning Commission reviewed this request at their December 22nd, excuse me, 21st, 2020 meeting by unanimous vote. The Planning Commission confirmed staff's findings in Section 5 that CEP SP 2012 SOD Building Phase 2 is in conformity with adopted town planning policies. Staff recommendation for the site plan request, CUP 2012, excuse me, CUP SP 2012 conformity highlighted in the worksheet on the following pages. Um, please refer to page 52 in your packet for the motion to approve or deny um, CEP SP 2012, also known as the SOD Bill of Phase 2. And that concludes my presentation. If anyone has any questions, I am here to answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jones, and I will uh, uh, give each council member an opportunity to ask questions before we get to our next uh, witness. So I'll begin with uh, Mr. Matthews. Do you have any questions, sir? Not at this time, sir. Okay, Mr. Singleton? No, sir, not at this time. Okay, uh, Mr. Dellinger? Uh, not right now. Wait okay. Uh, Mr. Vance? Uh, no, I have no questions at this time. Okay, thanks, sir. And Ms. Beringer? No, sir, no questions. Okay. Um, 
We are ready, I believe, to uh, to uh, call our next witness. Did you want to introduce that person, uh, Ms. Jones, or I have a name on my list here uh, that I can call as well. Do you know who? I think it may be Mandy Saw or either Keith. I'm not sure who's first or okay. I know both yeah. of them signed up. Okay, so uh, at this point, I will call on Mr. Keith Roberts unless uh, uh, he prefers to go in a different order. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, this is By the way, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Roberts. I must, yes. I must ask you as a, as a matter of what we're doing here that, uh, uh, have you been sworn this evening and do you consent to, uh, to this remote meeting? I do. And I have. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You can proceed at this time, sir. Thank you. Uh, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you uh, to planning department, Ms. Jones, for a great presentation there. And uh, she basically covered all site aspects very well. I do not really have anything to add. It's a fairly simple project, uh, small 6,000 square foot flex building, but uh, I am here and available for questions. And I think. Um, Mr. Saad is also available on the phone if uh, you have any questions for him. Okay, uh, Council, uh, if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and maybe recognize Mr. Saad and he, and then we can turn to questions uh, for either Mr. Roberts or Mr. Saad. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, Mr. Saad, uh, if you're on the phone and can hear me, I assume you are. Have you been sworn tonight, sir? And do you also commit, excuse me, consent to uh, the remote meeting? Yes, sir. I do and I have. Okay, sir. Uh, we'll be pleased to hear any uh, comments or presentation you have at this time, sir. I concur with Keith Roberts and uh, Ms. Jones, I think, has been uh, presented very well. So I have no further uh, comments unless you guys have any questions. Okay, so since both Mr. Roberts and Mr. Scheid are now available to the council, I will call on council members for any questions uh, or comments they care to make. I'll begin with Mr. Vance. I have no questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Beringer. No questions. Okay, Mr. Singleton. No, no, sir, no questions. Okay, Mr. Dellinger. No questions. Okay, and Mr. Matthews. Well presented, no question. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Council. And um, are there, uh, those are the only persons uh, that I had listed as wanting to speak for this application. Um, are there others uh, who are either online or otherwise uh, would uh, let us know that they uh, have been sworn and would like to testify? Okay, hearing none, and Ms. Gibson, you're not aware of any others, I'm supposing. No, sir, I'm not. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Council, um, I will ask you this time if there are any comments uh, you care to make. I think you've already had a chance to ask questions, but if there are last minute questions, feel free to do so. So uh, I'll begin with uh, Mr. Singleton. Any questions or comments before we call for a motion? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dellinger? Uh, none. Just good to see more growth out in the area of this type. It fits perfectly. So that's all. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Matthews? Uh, Mr. Saad uh, has always brought great things to the town, and I'm sure this won't be any exception, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Vance? Uh, no, sir. I have no further questions. Okay, and Ms. Beringer. No, no questions. Good to hear from Mr. Saad again. Haven't seen him in a while. Okay. Um, well, unless there are other items uh, to be brought forward on this matter, I believe uh, at this point it would be appropriate uh, to entertain a motion uh, uh, on this uh, on this request. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that the council accepts the staff statements regarding the plan, consistency, and Section seven of this report as our own and find the application meets the 10 criteria in section 3.1414.D and therefore approve CUP SP 2012 side building phase two 
with the two conditions to be listed on the permit that will be that will be prepared by the staff. Second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vance, for that motion. And we do have a proper second. I believe that was Mr. Matthews, probably. Okay. So, Council, um, I will ask you if you're ready to vote just before we do. Are there any other uh, uh, items uh, uh, or comments to make? Hearing none, I will ask the uh, clerk to call the roll at this time. Please vote aye if you approve the motion, and please vote nay if you disapprove. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Vance? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Berenger? Aye. Councilmember Dellinger? Aye. Okay, so the motion uh, passes unanimously and uh, and is approved. And um, I too commend uh, uh, you, Mr. Saad, uh, for this uh, project and those who present it. Uh, well done, and uh, we look forward to you being able to move ahead with that, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. Thank okay, you. thank you all. So, uh, Council, the next item on our agenda. Let me find this. Um, Number two is an annexation petition, ANX 2020. This is located at 105 Shore Drive. Um, and Mr. Banford, I believe, is available if we need him to present. But this is an item that was continued from our January 4 meeting. So um, I'm going to declare this time that uh, this, uh, this hearing is reopened from the continuance of January 4th. And uh, if there's any further presentation from Mr. Banford, who uh, who submitted at the initial meeting, we will hear from him. And then we have at least uh, uh, one uh, witness uh, that uh, we need to hear from. Is there anything else from Mr. Banford? I don't have anything, Mr. Mayor, unless you'd like for me to summarize the case again. Uh, why don't you do that, do, do that briefly, if you will, sure. sir? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, point of uh, personal oh, excuse privilege. me. Yes. Uh, I would like to, at this time, ask council to recuse me from this item uh, as I have a financial interest in it as well. Thank you, Mr. Dellinger. I had thought I made myself a note to be remind council that at the last meeting, upon his request, council did approve that. So uh, upon his request this evening, I will ask council, if you will, uh, to vote uh, uh, regarding his um, request to be recused so uh, Ms. clerk if you will call the roll on that issue council member singleton aye council member vance aye council um, mayor pro tem berenger aye and council member matthews aye and mr banford uh you have been sworn and you consent uh, also to the remote meeting is that correct yes sir Okay, if you'll brief, give us a brief summary. Thank you. Sure. I will pull up the presentation. This is annexation case 20-20. The property is located at 105 Shore Drive, and this is a street off of Buffalo Road near Lake Benson. The property is approximately 0.7 acres in size. Zoning of the property is residential 20. Use of the property is single family residential. There's an existing home on the property now. And uh, the proposed uh, Effective date for annexation, if this moves forward tonight, would be January the 19th. And I'll be happy to answer any additional questions. Okay. At this point, I think rather than um, uh, calling on each uh, council member individually, I will just uh, ask if there's any one of the council members who wishes to ask Mr. Bamford a question, and we'll go from there. Okay, hearing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Bamford. Um, I have on my notes uh, that we do have the applicant who wishes to speak uh, to the council. And so we welcome Ms. Uh, Rebecca uh, Lecky. 
And so uh, would you proceed at this time, ma'am? Hi, Mayor and Town Council. Hi. Um, hi. I'd like to speak to the council's questions regarding my request for annexation. Uh, before I do, I'd like the council to know that I've made Garner my home for almost 15 years now. I'm an active resident. I serve on the boards of Garner Elite Softball and the Garner Optimist Club, and I'm also a member of the Garner Area Historical Society. Although the application for annexation did not require a reason, I'd like to provide and answer the council's questions as to why I'd like to be annexed. At the council meeting on January 4th, 2021, Mr. Bamford stated that the satellite annexation is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. As each annexation is considered on its own merits and convenient access to town services, there's no precedent to be set for all voluntary annexations. Uh, to further speak to Mr. Singleton's concern over precedence, every voluntary annexation is judged on its own merit when received and reviewed by staff and when presented during a public hearing. For this particular property, the staff recommended approval of this annexation on, based on the facts and merits of that uh, petition and adherence to North Carolina law. According to North Carolina case law, cities and towns are not required to provide services to properties that voluntarily annex uh, if delivery of, delivery of those services is overly burdensome, as it's presumed the applicant would have evaluated this prior to the petitioning uh, for annexation. A satellite annexation petition is required when requesting the annexation of property that does not uh, abut directly against the primary corporate limits. The application must be signed by all the property owners. The area to be annexed must meet these certain criteria. So one, it cannot be more than three miles from the primary corporate limits of annexing municipality. This property is 600 feet from the town limits. This is only 6% of the maximum distance required by law. Number two, it cannot be closer to another municipality's primary corporate limits. The next closest municipality border boundary to this property is Peak Wave Arena and Ted 10 and Fanny Brown Road, which is 3.1 miles away. And three, the annexing uh, municipality must be able to provide the same services to the satellite portion as it does the primary uh, corporate limits. So in the previous hearing, in response to the inquiry from council members, staff confirmed that the affirmed that delivery of town, town services to this property was not only possible, but would not be inconvenient nor burdensome given this property's close proximity, 600 feet, to neighborhoods and properties that already receive the town services. Voluntary annexation of this property has no impact on adjoining or nearby properties and does not require that they also be annexed and it does not affect the property values taxes at all. Uh, this annexation will also result in additional town uh, tax revenue for the town. Annexing uh, this property will generate an additional 1500 to 2000 per year to the town. Over 10 years, including property value appreciation, this could be over 25000 of free money to the town of Garner to use for parks, police, road improvements, which is a clear benefit to the town uh, for public safety and welfare for the residents. So it seems that the town would benefit from this voluntary annexation. They would actually want to encourage voluntary annexations, particularly for properties that have tax values that exceed $300,000. Uh, Lakeshore has been an ETJ since at least 1988, and properties brought into the municipalities ETJ are brought in not just to expand the town's planning and zoning control, but also with the hope of future inclusion into the town limits for the added tax revenue. Having lived in the town limits for almost 15 years, I've grown accustomed to the services provided by the town of Garner, and I would hate to lose these. Here are my main reasons. Like I narrowed it down for five for you guys, but there are a lot more that I want to be annexed. So one, trash pickup, uh, waste disposal is needed. You have to pay for yourself. The town provides superior, addi superior additional services that you can't just easily purchase from a waste vendor. So uh, lathe removal, spring cleaning pickups, those aren't provided by the waste services. So these services cost at least $500 a year, and that's just for the regular waste. That's not for all of the additional items. If I was annexed into the town limits, my property taxes of town would cover the regular trash pickup and recycling, but also the special unprepared waste. Um, All Star, which is the town's solid waste contractor, already provides service to at least one other home on Shore Drive. So this would make it clearly easily serviceable uh, by the town's contract with All Star. Mm -hmm. Number two, the Garner Police Department. Garner Police Department is professional, honorable, respected, accredited law enforcement agency. Having attended the Garner Citizens Police Academy, I value the special services that they supply to their residents. 
Given the location of this property near Lake Benson and several neighborhoods already served by the Garner Police Department, the delivery police services is convenient because it's in the middle of town. Also because of the location to the property in the heart of Garner, in the event of an emergency, the Garner Police Department would respond and arrive a lot more quickly than the County Sheriff's Department. How important could it be between a one minute and a four minute response time be? Could be the difference between life and death. And with the events that have occurred recently, I want the fastest and belief best police response possible. Also because the Garner Police Department is committed to service, professionalism, training, accountability, and a time when the arrival of police at your home can put you at risk for poorly trained or impulsive police officers, I trust the Garner Police Department to do the right thing and the right way if I ever call on them. As someone who values peace of mind, safety, this alone is worth being in the town of Garner. Reason three, access to town activities. Town offers many amenities, classes, activities at discount rates to town residents. For many years, I've enjoyed these uh, activities. I've participated. I'd like to continue to do so at the current town rate throughout, provided through my property taxes. Number four, the right to vote. I'm an active voter. I volunteer at the polls for early voting and election days. Not being able to vote for those that ultimately represent all neighborhoods around me would be disenfranchising. I would be located in the center of Garner with the decisions of the town council directly affecting me, yet not able to represent myself with a vote. The right to vote and have a voice that is listened to and matters are important to me and the quality of life in our community. Is that worth being in the town of Garner? Absolutely it is to me. For this, and I won't bore you for many, many more reasons, I'd like to stay as a resident in the town of Garner when I move over to my new home. All these services would be provided to me property through additional property taxes and at net, a net revenue gain to the town. I would appreciate the council staff uh, recommendation, um, accepting the staff's recommendation to approve my voluntary annexation. I appreciate your time. And if you have any further questions, please let me know. Thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, for that thorough presentation, and uh, I appreciate uh, your comments. So, I will at this time um, hold the council to see if they have questions for you, and I will begin at this point uh, with Mr. Matthews. I do not, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'll go to Mr. Vance. No questions. Okay, I'll go to uh, uh, Ms. Beringer. Uh, yes, just one question. The other property on Shore Drive that uh, is served by All Star, have they been at that property been annexed into the town? No. Okay, do you know what the reason is that All Star services? Is that an individual contract? I think they're individual contracts. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and uh, Mr. Singleton? No, sir. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, um, Ms. Lecky. I think that's all the questions uh, that the council has at this point in time. Um, I'm not aware of any other persons who expect to give testimony in this case. Uh, Mr. Bamford, are you aware, or Ms. Lecky, the one? Are there others out there? Okay. Hearing, hearing none, then um, the request before the uh, council is to adopt the annexation ordinance 2021-5004 and um, hearing no other comments or questions from council i will ask for a motion at this time mr mayor i'll make a, a comment first i think uh, uh i have some uneasiness about the application it's legal it's all all it's i know that they went through the proper procedures nothing wrong with that at all i just think there's another reason that i think we are, are asked to annex this property and and just you know mr dellinger to be an elected official and leaving the town limits and this property is not the town limits so it needs to be in the town limits so that's an uneasy feeling Knowing that when I moved in Garner, I bought a house in the town limits, and as I know others have that served down and served previously, so it's just not something I personally would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. But that's just me. That's the uneasiness I have. It's, that's that's the main reason. If if, if Mr. Dungeon went on the council and they bought this house, and there would be no need to annex. Um, that's the uneasiness that I have. Can I answer that because it's, it's all legal. Not There's nothing wrong with it I, at all. 
And I understand right. that, but that's the uneasiness that I have with being asked to do it. Uh, Ms. Lakey, I'll come back to you for sure. Um, and so let me let me uh, see if other council members uh, have a question. Okay, go go ahead and respond if you'd like to at this time. Ms. Lakey. Sure. So one of my main concerns when I mean being in the complete middle of town, it never occurred to me when we were buying the property that it was not in the town limits. And when it did, my first concern was, I'm not gonna be able to vote for the town council. That was my first. And so I did research and found that we could annex. So there was that, but then all these other things started to build. So those are my main reasons. And yes, Damon is on the council and he would be able to remain council. But I will tell you, these were my main concerns. And this is me as an applicant speaking to that for you. I'm happy to answer any other questions. Okay. I understand because you, you would think where it's located that if, I mean, it's surrounded by Garner, but then. Exactly. Uh, it never occurred to me that it would be outside of the limits. Yeah, but the other side of Buffalo Road, all those homes are outside of Garner. They're, they're surrounded by Garner too, but they're outside the, they're not uh, annexed except for one at, at, at one corner. So that was just an uneasy that I have. I'm just, I'm just staking out there um, because if somebody you know, watching this said, well, that, that's why you did this. That's why you did that. I just wanted to explain it. So that's, I've explained it. And I know that y'all looked for, uh, for houses for some time. I talked to Damien about it. He told me y'all have looked for houses in Garner for some time. And uh, sometimes you got to get into bid wars and things. You think you got a house and it just gets taken away. So I know y'all been looking for a while. Okay. And I would just comment uh, while other council members maybe are pondering and uh, we are so we are asking for a motion and I think this council needs to go on record uh, making a motion here this evening. I do think that uh, a reasonable request has been made. Mr. Dellinger was uh, certainly elected by the citizens of Garner. Um, and uh, I accept the reasons uh, that have been presented here. I know and respect any uh, concerns that council member has, including Mr. Singleton. Um, but after one, uh, I uh, hope the council would uh, give every reasonable consideration to this request, just like you would any other. And we have done, obviously, some other satellite annexations from time to time. So uh, one way or the other, we need uh, we need to get a motion on this and go ahead and um, and resolve this. It was before us, obviously, a couple of weeks ago. We continued it. I think it's only reasonable to, uh, to go ahead and, and take what I hope and I believe is proper action in the case. Um, so the floor is still open for, for, for a motion on this matter. Um, I'll entertain that at this time or any other comment from other council members. Uh, Ms. Ms. Lake, I would say that um, I understand the dilemma that you're in because I had a similar one about 11 years ago before I moved here. Uh, there was a home outside of the uh, the town limits and uh, the family was leaning toward that one. But once I found out that, okay, I would not be able to sit on uh, the, the commissions and boards I was a part of, then that was a part of the decision-making process. It is a, a tough decision uh, to make and understand uh, and appreciate the thorough briefing that you provided to us, really do. And, um, and, I, and I feel the the struggle of the council as well. It is it is one uh, that is uh, a tough decision uh, to be made. Uh, again, the detail which you provided was, I would say, exceptional. Very good. Very well, like laid out. Uh, uh, and it is one decision that is going to be a a hard one to make uh, for myself. Uh, similar fashion to what 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 has been said. I understand uh, the mayor's uh, position, also I understand Gray's position, and it places us in, in a dilemma. It does. Uh, 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 with that being said, are uh, we ready for the motion, Mr. Mayor? I am indeed. I think a motion is in order at this time, sir. Okay. 
All right. Um, Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the annexation of ordinance 2021-5004. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. And Mr. Singleton, I believe you seconded the motion. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So motions properly made and seconded. Uh, any other comments from council before we vote? Hearing none, um, then I will ask the uh, clerk to call the roll. If you approve of the motion, please say aye. If you disapprove, say no. Mayor Perkins Berenger. Aye. Councilmember Vance? Aye. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. And Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Okay, I declare as mayor that the uh, motion has been properly passed by the four voting members. And uh, uh, thank you, Council. Uh, I know um, some of your difficulties in coming uh, to this decision. And Ms. Lakey, thank you for your uh, able presentation before us. I uh, am pleased that. Um, this action was taken and uh, hopefully it'll work uh, well uh, for you and for all concerned. Thank you for your time. Okay. All right, council, we will move. Uh, thank you. We will move to the next section Mr. of our Mayor. agenda. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, to a point of just a personal privilege, a brief yes. comment to the council. Um, I just want to say um, I appreciate the council's um, very serious consideration and diligence on this. It is incumbent upon, you know, something as mundane as a satellite annexation, things we approve all the time. It is incumbent upon us to be more, have a higher threshold of scrutiny for our elected officials. Um, and it makes it harder to do things the right way sometimes and go through the right processes. Um, but uh, I'm appreciative of, of the decision you came to, but also appreciative of of the scrutiny and diligence that you all have, and thought you've given uh, to this hearing and matter. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Dallinger, for those uh, for those comments, well stated. Okay, uh, Councilor, are we ready to move forward to item three of the agenda? Um, CUPSP 2009 Rand Village Apartments. Um, this uh, will be uh, another quasi-judicial hearing, and uh, Ms. Jones, do I need to read my intro before I call on testimony? I believe, um, or was the reading previously satisfactory? No, you do not have to um, read the intro again. You'll just have to confirm that each witness has been sworn in and consents to the remote meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And so, um, uh, I believe, Mr. Treasonberg, are you the first presenter in this case? Uh, yes, I will be. So let me ask you, sir, have you been properly sworn and do you consent to uh, uh, the remote hearing? I have and I do. Thank you, sir. And uh, at this time, I will be pleased to recognize you for your presentation. All righty. So this uh, hearing here tonight is uh, for Rand Village Apartments. Mm -hmm. Uh, the case number is CUPSP 2009. Um, so this is following closely on the original subdivision approval uh, that you all heard a few months ago. Uh, so again, the applicant is uh, Cambridge Properties, uh, specifically the application was signed by Mr. Barrett Blackburn. Uh, the tract totals 18.34 acres. Uh, the Planning Commission met and considered this item at their meeting on December 21st. Uh, the use would be for apartments, uh, 264 units. Uh, the minimum lot size for uh, this zoning district was 5,000 square feet with setbacks of 35 in the front, 25 in the rear, 15 feet to the side, and 25 on any corner. Uh, so here is the site plan. Uh, you see US Highway 401 to the left of your screen, and then that's Caddy Road uh, coming across the southern portion of the screen. Uh, you'll see a dashed uh, outline of a what looks to be a fairly large circle. That is the current, uh, well, probably not current anymore since we <laughs> approved the text amendment. 
uh, but that was the uh, fall zone setback for the telecommunication tower that is on the site. Uh, so you can see that there are no uh, living units within that uh, fall zone, just parking and other uh, non-habitable type improvements. Uh, so the site is very narrow at 401. They, they do have a sign easement up there, but uh, all of the apartment units are further back into the site. Uh, buildings will be constructed of fiber cement and brick veneer. Uh, this parcel is covered by the US 70401 overlay. Uh, so our interpretation of that overlay at uh, a staff level is that all buildings should be at least 50% uh, masonry finishes. So you'll see that some of these, depending on topo, may have a fourth floor, um, but generally they're a mix of uh, three and four story buildings with a fourth floor where the topography allows. The development does include 12.5% of its acreage as improved or preserved uh, environmental open space, uh, exceeding the minimum requirement of 10. For landscaping and buffering requirements, the uh, tree cover being conserved is at 13.8% of the site, again exceeding that requirement of 10%. The perimeter buffers, we have a 35 foot buffer to the north and south and a 25 foot buffer to the east. Uh, the street buffers are seven and a half feet along the 401 corridor and 15 feet along Caddy Road. And street trees are being provided on average of one for every 40 feet of a uh, public or private street. The lighting for the site has been shown in conformance with the UDO, as well as meeting our staff guidelines for LED fixtures. Those fixtures have zero up light, uh, low glare, excuse me, and a warm white light exhibiting a color temperature of no more than 4,000 Kelvin. The inspections department together with the fire department has reviewed and preliminarily approved these plans. For parking, uh, the parking is based for apartments on the number of bedrooms in each unit, uh, plus <laughs> a provision for guest parking. Uh, so typically the ordinance would require 522. They have uh, proposed 425. Uh, this is a uh, minus 18.6% deviation uh, pursuant to the authorized flexibility of section 7.4.C. Uh, the applicant has presented a parking study uh, following up on, on the requirements of that section, which suggests that 396 spaces would be sufficient. Uh, when we analyzed that number, that equated to basically one and a half spaces per unit, uh, but no extra provision for mm -hmm. guest parking. Uh, that being said, there were some revisions that the applicant went back and made and has uh, added 29 more spaces uh, to that. Uh, there is additional space on the site uh, um, if additions warranted in the future, if they find out that it's not enough. And just for your reference, the largest deviation currently granted by Council has been approximately minus 15% at Evolve Timber Creek. The site does not contain any FEMA designated floodplains. It's largely upland uh, habitat areas. Rand Village is subject to stormwater quality requirements for nitrogen and 85% uh, total suspended solid removal, as well as water quantity requirements for the 110 and 25 year storms. The development plan does propose a wet retention pond uh, in the site plan that was to the north um, top part of the screen that will entreat uh, that impervious surface area and the device will satisfy all of the previous requirements apart from a nitrogen offset payment also being required that uh, they will make to the mitigation bank. Uh, the development will connect to City of Water, uh, City of Raleigh, public water and sewer. Those uh, utilities have been expanding in this area as development has occurred. 
The frontage improvements were approved as part of the conditional use subdivision you heard previously, but just as a reminder, uh, they include the road frontage along 401 being widened with curb, gutter, and sidewalk within the existing right-of-way. Uh, the development will not have direct access to 401. All of the access will be on to Caddy. Uh, and a dedicated right turn lane from northbound 401 on to Caddy will be installed. And Caddy Road will also be widened uh, on the north side. McCullers Walk was doing the opposite side. Uh, again, to include curb, gutter, and sidewalk with some additional right of way. Plan conformity, the 2018 Garner Forward Transportation Plan recommends Fayetteville Road as a six lane divided arterial. Uh, the plan did not provide any specific recommendations for bike and ped facilities, but with the proposed roadway widening and construction of the curb, gutter and sidewalk, uh, this project may be considered consistent with the recommendations of that plan. Uh, we reviewed the Parks, Rec, Open Space and Greenways Master Plan and did not see any immediate plan recommendations in this area. Uh, therefore, this project as proposed may also be considered with that plan. And finally, after sufficient review and plan revisions, staff does find that this project is now proposed may be considered consistent with the regulations of the UDO so long as a parking uh, reduction deviation is granted by the town council and the following project specific conditions are met. Uh, number one, Prior to issuance of a building permit, payment of engineering inspection fees must be paid. Two, prior issuance of uh, prior to issuance of the building permit, proof of the nitrogen offset payment uh, must be provided. And I'm sorry, there's only four. Uh, this should be three. Prior to issuance of a building permit, payment of public utilities shall be paid to the city of Raleigh. And four, all public road improvements on the north side of Caddy Road shall be completed prior to the first residential certificate of occupancy uh, being granted in this complex. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this request at their December 21st meeting by a unanimous vote. Uh, they did confirm staff's findings that it is in conformity with adopted town plans and policies. Uh, there was considerable discussion about the parking um, However, they knew that that was going to be discussed further here tonight, but um, if, if found to be comfortable with the parking levels provided, uh, they did agree that it does meet plans and policies. So you do have um, a motion on page 68 of your packet regarding approval or denial of the special use permit. Uh, Mr. Jay Priester is here tonight uh, coordinating, I believe, uh, the presentation from the applicants. Again, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, for staff at this time. Okay, thank okay, you, Mr. Treason. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Uh, Treasonberg, thank, thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, sort of poll the uh, council members, and at this time, I recognize Mr. Dellinger for any questions he may have. Uh, just a quick question. What uh, I was taking a lot of notes. Um, what's the plan for the intersection of Caddy Road and 401? Is that going to be a right turn only out of there? I know we've got the Costco coming on the other side. What's the what's the plan for that intersection there? If I recall correctly, and I'll defer to Mr. Johnson if I'm wrong, um, this Caddy Road will be a kind of a three quarter intersection so you'll be able to make a left over uh, southbound into Caddy Road but if you want to go southbound on 401 you'll need to make a right and then do a, uh, a u-turn where is that you where is the u-turn uh, the u-turn is going to be a little further north um, and will be constructed as part of the 401 assemblage project if I'm not mistaken, or there might be, there might be one a little closer than that. Okay. I believe and it was, the, yeah, I believe it was constructed by McCullers Walk actually. In the, the parking, um, what was the reason given for that large of a deviation? I didn't hear a reason. Just that they conducted their, they have their own parking study uh, performed on products that 
they have built similarly in other jurisdictions, but uh, that would be a question for them to better answer. Okay, that's all the questions I have right now. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, Mr. Matthews, any questions? I have none at this time, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Singleton. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Devil just some of the questions I have. I believe per the uh, exiting or when you leave Caddy Road and head north, I believe that U-turn is not very far down there because one reason that uh, we decided to, to see, put the fire station rescue EMS there is that they, because they would have to do the, make the same movement to go out and it was, uh, I believe a short distance. Um, question about Caddy Road, uh, Mr. Treasonberg, state, we state here that they're responsible for the north side and I believe you said the McCullers apartments project is responsible for the south side of Caddy Road, is that correct? Yes, um, for for some of it. <laughs> I think that's a little bit complicated. They are doing some widening. This project also has some Property uh, south. improvements on the south side as well. So I know McCullers was at least doing uh, some pavement improvements and some pavement widening. I thought they were doing some curb, but maybe just not the sidewalk, but I could be wrong on that. So all the improvement from Caddy Road can be, I know the north side has to be uh, completed before the first uh, CO is issued. What about the south side? I mean, we're going to be doing half of Caddy Road and come back later and do the other half, or are, we gonna, are they going to try to do that in a, uh, in a coordinated effort to do it all at one time? Mm -hmm. Um, again, I'll defer to them specifically on that, but I know when our, when we approved it for the subdivision, we, we said that each side had to be finished prior to a CO associated with that side, but I would think that they would probably want to take advantage of some synergies to knock it all out at once. Okay. And I will second what Mr. Dellinger said about the parking reduction. I know they make surveys of their current properties, and I understand all that. But what if driving habits change in the next five to ten years? And what if electric cars become real popular and everybody decides to have one? And I'm sitting here thinking we're going to be short of parking spaces by 18.3 percent or whatever it was. So that's just a concern. I know we can make reductions, and we've done reductions before, but these continual reductions, somewhere along the line, I got a feeling we're going to look back and say, "Gosh, why did we do that?" That's my thoughts. I'm finished, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Singleton. I'll go to uh, uh, Ms. Berringer. Any questions? I, I have the same concerns as Mr. Dellinger and Mr. Singleton about the parking situation. Um, I realize that they do have their programs where they can um, do their studies and find out what works in general. But uh, when you think of, of even visitors coming to, to see friends, uh, where are they going to park? Um, and they did mention, I believe, that they had provided for, there would be some provision for parking on the site somewhere should it be needed. Um, it just concerns me that, that we, they continue to reduce the parking when we have found uh, reason to require the number of parking spaces we have. So that's all. Okay, and Mr. Vance? Oh, questions have been asked and uh... Is the is the developer here? Yes, sir. Yes, we're going to recognize uh, him or uh, the several other folks who wish to testify at this time. If we are finished with Mr. Treasonberg. Okay. Well, so question nice and answered. I'll wait for the developer. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Treasonberg. I have several names on here. I don't know if you want to introduce uh, who is coming next, or is it Mr. Priester who's going to. Uh, uh, lay out how he wants to present the, the case with uh, other witnesses. Is that right? Yes, I would defer to him. Okay, so uh, Mr. Priester, I will recognize you at this time and I will ask you, sir, uh, uh, if you have been sworn and you consent to this remote hearing, sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is Jay Priester. I have not been sworn in and we have several other speakers uh, joining us this evening that need to be sworn in as well. Okay, I believe it would be proper. Uh, Ms. Gibson, could we do that at this time? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, other than Mr. Priester, who else do we have that needs to be sworn? 
Um, I believe Wyatt Bone has been sworn in. Uh, Jeff Okanadel has been sworn in. But also speaking is Barrett Blackburn, uh, Seth Coker, and Rhonda Kunzman. Okay. Would each of you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly, sincerely, really declare and affirm that the evidence you provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do you? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gibson. So, uh, again, uh, Mr. Priest, I will ask you for the record, at least I know you've been sworn now, do you consent, sir, to the remote meeting? Uh, Jay Priester consents to the remote meeting. Okay, and I think I'm supposed to ask you to give your name and your address, if you don't mind doing that. Sure, Jay Priester, Cambridge Properties, 831 East Moorhead Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28202. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Please proceed, if you will. Sure. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Town Council, um, to have the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I also have a PowerPoint um, that I'd like to bring up um, to the screen here. I have control of this. Okay. Uh, this is our project team and also speakers available this evening uh, with this uh, being a quasi-judicial process and having the uh, following after Jeff did a very good job and a thorough presentation of our project. Um, I would like to um, uh, go through a brief PowerPoint and this is very similar to what you all saw uh, last month with our project across the street, which was the Costco and Chick-fil-A project. Jay, could I interrupt you briefly? Am I the only one that uh, I don't believe I see on my screen the presentation you're speaking of? Do other council members have that same on your problem. screen? Yeah, same problem. Yes, sir. Same, same problem. Uh, we see something that's uh, got a date of uh, November the 5th on it. Right. Same here. Jay, we're seeing your team's screen is what is being shared. Thank you for... I've got some more help here in the office that's right here, man. Okay, how does that look now? Yes, sir. It looks good. Yeah. Okay, looks much great. better. See yes, you. thank you. Great. This is um, uh, very similar to our presentation from last month uh, because we took the macro approach to developing really four quadrants here at the intersection of 401 and 1010. Just to recap briefly, um, project that was approved last week is uh, or last month is the commercial component with Costco and Chick-fil-A. Uh, the component in front of you tonight is the what we call Caddy Road North and then we also have the Caddy Road South um, which we will hopefully be in front of your um, board again in the next few months to present that site plan. We did zone all these properties at uh, the same time but now we're sequentially going through a site plan approval process specific to each site. And so I hope to uh, answer some of your questions that you had um, following Jeff's presentation. So a little bit uh, zoomed in, give you another pr uh, perspective of the site and location. So of course, Caddy North on the lower right hand corner of your screen is the project that was being presented. The technical plan that Jeff had just um, shown uh, is on the screen now. Uh, this outlines our open space, which Jeff uh, uh, shared that we exceed the ordinance of 10% um, or 12.5%, as well as exceeding the tree save uh, component of 10% as well. Um, the item that we are uh, focused on here is that is the amount is allowed under the ordinance and excuse me, the 10% open space is based upon usable and active open space. And when we got into the ordinance, 
um, we actually had additional what we call amenity space or natural space. And this is very important for us uh, in this area because we are in the Swift Creek watershed and we did want to be very sensitive to it. And this also plays into an aspect of the parking. So we are actually at 56% what we call natural and community uh, areas. And this allows us to really have a maximum um, or keep our impervious area to a minimum of about 44%. Uh, so we're more pervious here than impervious. And that's part of this development and what we're trying to achieve here. This is, I wanna talk briefly about the road improvements since I know this came up. Um, what we're doing for this side of the road or for this specific project is we're adding in an additional right turn lane on 401 that is shown in uh, green on your screen. And then we're uh, adding additional asphalt along Caddy Road, which is also shown in green. So that shows you the additional road work that will be done. The existing turn movement on Caddy Road is a protected left in to the project from 401. So you can make a left in from 401, but you cannot make a left going south on 401. And that's the existing condition uh, there today. The U-turn bulb is about 800 feet uh, to the north that is existing today that was put in as a part of the McCullers Walk project. Um, so that we'll have that is already in place. The areas in blue next to the green on your screen is where we're adding in uh, the street lights, parking, uh, excuse me, a planning strip with street trees, and then also a sidewalk. And that sidewalk will connect to the advanced or to the auto zone sidewalk there and then we're stubbing the sidewalk going north to the next project uh, as that gets developed. The improvements to the south will match this. So we call that Caddy South, which will come in front of your board uh, hopefully later this year, uh, very soon. And those project and those improvements will be completed at that time. We are extending a, uh, a water line, domestic water line from 401, which will go all the way to the end of our property. That will be on the Caddy South side of the road so there is additional work being done that will also serve caddy north uh, that will connect into the water line that uh, mccullers walk has extended up caddy road uh, to the questions that while we're speaking about caddy road uh, Halley group who developed mccullers is in the process of milling and overlay all overlaying all of caddy road from their project all the way to 401 uh, we have a very good working relationship with uh, that developer and we've been working in conjunction to try to tie our improvements in together. Uh, I believe uh, Councilman Singleton mentioned it would make a lot of sense to sequence improvements together and that's exactly our thought and our plan uh, here at this project to do so. Good. I thought this was a very important uh, slide to share. Uh, Caddy Road is um, with the McCullers Walk development is also now really able to connect to 1010 Road. And this is very strategic connection point to allow traffic to avoid 401. We all recognize that's a strategic corridor going into Raleigh, but it allows uh, potentially a safer movement at certain peaks and times of the day to go through the McCullers neighborhood and then access 1010 Road um, via that way. Jeff explained very well our commitments during the rezoning process, uh, which we have uh, are meeting and exceeding as a part of this project, especially as attuned to our uh, elements of our design and elevations of our buildings, uh, exceeding 50% uh, masonry for all the buildings, consistent architectural design, as well as a number of amenities uh, that were committed to during that project, dog parks, open space, we've obviously exceeded those here are the, here's Jeff explained, we have two different building heights. We have a four story and a three story. In his presentation, he showed the four story building. Also wanted to share with you a three story building. Here's the four story building and an elevation of the clubhouse. Wanted to touch on the parking and at this time, I'm gonna, um, 
let a couple of the experts, and I'll call them up individual, individually to speak to each component. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the original traffic study that we had, the tip or the parking study we had Kimmins Group do, uh, did suggest that one and a half parking spaces per unit was sufficient. And we did go back and increase that uh, to another an additional 29 parking spaces. So we are up to 425 parking spaces. That does include some garages and even more than that, we do have oversized garages that we plan to do here that accommodates people who maybe have a bigger vehicle or also want to use their garage for not only for their car, but for other um, uh, bikes or whatever else they may need additional storage for. The important thing to look at when you are uh, looking at a uh, parking ratio for multifamily uh, development is how many bedrooms are there. And what we have here, which is very unique, is, is we have no three bedroom units. We are focused on a majority of one bedroom units and then secondarily the two bedroom units. So we have 144 one bedroom units and uh, 120 two bedroom units. So what we need to look at is how many spaces per unit are we? We're actually at 1.61 spaces per unit. And then and also we're 1.1 space per bedroom. So it's really the bedroom component that we need to focus on. And it also, um, when I will call up uh, Seth Coker shortly, who is the ultimate developer for the apartments, he will be the ultimate owner and developer for this component. Cambridge's uh, uh, development view is to master plan uh, larger development projects as we have done on this both the north side with uh, this project, the south side with the project to come, and then last month when we did the commercial component. We are the ultimate owner and developer for the commercial component. We like to control who develops the property around us, so that's why we brought in Comet, and I'm gonna let him, uh, Seth Coker with Comet Development, who will develop that component, and let him speak to his uh, experience and ownership and how they view things. But prior to introducing Jeff, I would like for uh, Jeff Hokenadel to speak to his parking analysis that he did as our first uh, expert testimony. Uh, Jeff, are you available? I am. Uh, can you please start by uh, giving a little bit of background about yourself, how many years you've been in traffic engineering, and, um, and then jump into your study? Sure, sure. I'll give my name and address, uh, Jeff Hokenadel. Uh, 5410 uh, Trinity Road, Suite 102, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27607. Uh, I have been sworn in, and I do consent to the online uh, format. So thank you, sure. Thank you. All that, all that out of the uh, in the record. Um, yeah, we, we, we. Uh, I've been. Uh, I'm a registered professional engineer, professional traffic operations engineer. I've been doing this for uh, uh, 20 over 20 years now, almost 21 years actually. Yeah, almost 21 years now. So. Um, done various parking studies in the past uh we for this study we looked at the uh, ite parking generation manual and we also looked at some area uh developments uh data on some area developments and found that uh, uh actually the the ratio that, uh, that could be used per unit is actually could be lower uh, than 1.5 we found it around that uh, uh based on the uh, area developments and based on the the parking generation manual itself it, it was approximately in the in the 1.3 uh, 1.32 ratio. Uh, so we, we felt comfortable recommending a 1.5 and, and since they've increased uh, parking to, to 1.6 spaces per unit, it's, uh, it's, it's even better for, uh, um, I, I think, I think it'll work uh, fine based on the, the information that we had. Thank you, Jeff. That was a good background um, and summary of your report. Um, Next uh, expert witness I would like to call is Rhonda, who is uh, Vice President of Operations for Bell Partners Property Management. They manage uh, a lot of, if not all of Comet's uh, multifamily projects in the Carolinas, but also thousands of units um, in the Southeast. And would like for, uh, Rhonda, if you could please introduce yourself and give us a quick background of your uh, experience Absolutely. Thanks, Jay. Um, hi, Rhonda Coonsman here. I have been sworn in and agree to be here tonight, sir. Thank you. 
Um, so I'm a VP of operations for Bell Partners. Currently, I oversee 30 plus communities in the triangle and the triad, many to which are new construction. Um, I wanted to provide a different perspective from the management side, because I'm sure you don't hear that as often. Um, I will say currently, specifically in the triangle, we're seeing an influx of residents moving from the north, which I'm sure all of you are well aware of. Um, with that, we've seen northerners actually do not typically have the average of two vehicles per household. It's actually quite less than that. Um, so as we're seeing in these newer communities and we have an influx of northern residents, we see less parking needed actually which has been pretty interesting, um, especially if you're used to suburban um, deals. So I will say that in addition to seeing kind of a less requirement on a per household, we've also seen that many folks are choosing to work from home. Um, that's pre-COVID, if you can believe that. Um, and so quite frankly, um, we don't see many couples needing the two vehicles. So they will have one vehicle, even if they're in a two bedroom. We've also seen where the majority of folks now are needing extra space at home to work from home. So a lot of one occupant households are actually choosing two bedrooms. Um, so it's just kind of interesting because when I look at recent built lease ups that I'm doing, we are actually on a per bed or per unit basis a little higher than what we've seen in the area with similar residential makeup. So they're an average of like 1.1 per bed, 1.03 per bed. So it's actually a lot less than what we are assuming. Um, I would say in addition to that, the um, what we're asking for as far as the 1.6 per unit, that's assuming we're 100% occupied all the time. So essentially an average occupancy is around 94%. So for, for us, that's 248 units which is 1.9 spaces per unit or 360 beds, which is actually 1.18 per bed. So when I look at it and I look at parking ratios and get asked the question, would we have enough parking? I look at it from also an occupancy standpoint. Um, so we would essentially exceed the thresholds um, at this community versus other that I'm currently managing. Very good, Rhonda. Thank you for that uh, presentation. In addition, um, uh, Rhonda uh, had a couple of uh, letters provided um, by her on-site property managers. These are for specific communities. We're submitting as of record as they weren't able to speak this evening, but did provide uh, two additional letters for uh, projects that are in the uh, vicinity of uh, Garner with similar or less parking spaces per unit. So um, this one is from the, uh, it's up on the screen, is from the property manager for Elevate, which is in Briar Creek. Uh, that is 1.06 spaces per bedroom, where we are 1.11 spaces per bedroom. Uh, letter uh, specifically uh, stating there has not been any issues. Uh, here is another one at Meridian at Nichols Plaza, that's 1.03. And this is uh, a, another property manager with a similar experience who's dealing with the issues. And that's what the people who know, it's not you know, us, it's the people who manage this every day and are leasing these units out because they're the ones who get complaints um, in this business. Um, so I did want to also mention before I turn it over to Seth, uh, to speak as our next expert testimony. Uh, we do have all the additional open space um, that I mentioned, the amenity space of 56%. It was not, it did not come down for us as an issue of we don't have this space or we're asking for something that um, because we needed an exception, we're doing it because we, we have experience in what is needed. And I'm gonna turn it over to Seth as our next expert uh, to talk not only about the parking but maybe a little bit about his experience. Uh, Seth, can you please uh, introduce yourself and give us a brief, brief background on Comet? Sure, I'm Seth Coker, 127 North Green Street, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27401. Um, I have been sworn in and I, I do accept this remote meeting format. Um, thank you to everybody who's spoken so far and the questions we've heard before. Uh, I think it's been a great presentation. Um, 
So I have built between Comet and the, my previous company, which I was in a partner in, uh, developed, built, and owned a little over 5,000 apartments over the last 20 years. Um, and really, as towards some of the points that have already been mentioned here, as the tenant mix in apartments has shifted more away from families to retirees to renters by choice, um, you've really seen the need for parking go down. And so probably, I don't know, five years ago, we kind of arrived at thinking that 1.1 parking spaces per bedroom is really what we need given our um, resident mix. And so uh, that's really what I, I told uh, the engineers with Bowler to really target as we laid this out. Um, and they did a great job getting the parking convenient to the buildings. Um, and I really do like to try to maximize green space as, as much as I can on our projects. Uh, and I think we were able to do that here. Uh, we do have plenty of room where we could add additional parking if we needed it. I just really don't feel that we do. Um, I think if there's any other points I wanted to try to make. And uh, that's, that's really it. I mean, and I'm very happy to answer any questions or, or try to address any concerns if I can. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, I did want to pull up here. Um, Seth is a humble guy, but he's done quite a number of projects. And I wanted to show a handful of projects that uh, Seth has developed. Uh, most of these are in the Raleigh uh, area, North Carolina, and, um, and one in South Carolina. But if you look at all these parking ratios, um, we are on the on the highest side of all of these. Um, so we're at 1.1 space per bedroom, and that exceeds all of these. And the other thing that, uh, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are a long-term owner of these units. Yeah. So I will I will say that uh, my first 15 years I didn't sell any apartments, <laughs> and then I sold kind of all of them as uh, my old partner and I decided to split ways and go and go our separate ways. But uh, since then, the last uh, 1,500 apartments or so, we haven't sold any. And the plan is to refinance them and keep them uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, I think that's a really uh, notable point. Um, as a long-term developer and owner of multifamily, you do not want to cut off your nose despite your face. Um, so if you go and underpark this and you build this today, that it's under parked, you're going to suffer. Um, you're going to suffer as a developer. So Seth is taking the approach and says, I'm not, he feels confident enough to invest tens of millions of dollars in a project and say, I'm very comfortable with this parking ratio because I'm going to own this long term. There's a number of developers uh, who do not build to hold, they build to sell these. So it's not their problem when these complaints come up in the future. Um, so I think that's something else to know is that. This project is for a long-term owner. However, the, in the event that there is an issue in the future, we can all recognize uh, that there is plenty of additional land here that parking could be added. Uh, the last point uh, that Seth had shared with me, and I think it's important to note, is also not only how many parking spaces, but is what is the location of the parking spaces in proximity to each unit. And if you look at the site plan one more time and you say, okay, where's the parking and where is it? It's right where the buildings are and also at the amenity center. And so that was very important is the parking distribution to the location of the buildings. So um, with that being said, Seth, if you don't have any other uh, additional comments, I would like to um, open it up to the council to ask any questions. Of, of any of us, as well as our engineers, Barrett Blackburn and Wyatt Bone, um, as well here this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you all. Um, yes, I will be happy to recognize council members for questions at this time. And uh, this time I'll start with uh, Ms. Beringer. Um, just one question. I, I understand and appreciate the explanation uh, and changing trends in apartment dwellers. But I do have one question, and that is if an individual, someone living singly in one of those apartments, one bedroom, had um, two friends coming to visit them, where would those two friends park their cars? Well, generally, in our, our plan would be we would not have 
uh, assigned parking spaces. So the friends would be able to park wherever they want. Um, and we really find, you know, the, when places go to assign parking spaces, it's because they don't have enough parking spaces. And uh, we, we feel with this ratio, we should be, we should be fine. We're fine in our other communities with this ratio. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Vance. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Okay, Mr. Matthews. No questions, sir. Okay, Mr. Uh, Dellinger. A few questions. Um, the first one related to this long-term hold. Are you all utilizing opportunity zone tax credits on this property for this development? We are not. Okay. My other question uh, relate. Well, one of my other questions relates to this preservation of open space, and I'm curious because there's virtually 100% tree coverage on this property. Yet you're only able to maintain 13%. What's the compelling need to cut down all those trees in exchange for actual clear, clear cutting and open space? It, it, and um, the definition that town, the, the town but ordinance uses, I'm yeah. sorry. The, but the, you could leave the you could leave the trees and achieve the same thing, right? We are leaving the trees. I, I think that's kind of the maybe what's misleading on that is that um, we're we're really only cutting down the trees. Kind of if you look at this at this part of the site plan, where you see the the dashed line that circles the buildings in the pond, those are your clearing limits, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's really what we're cutting down. And, and even that won't be 100% clear cut, but the, you know, kind of almost, not all, but almost all the area heading towards 401 um, would remain as trees. And uh, our interest would be to, to leave them as trees. And what I like to do in situations like this is limb up the branches and clear out the small caliper trees to make it a really walkable uh, type of area. Um, but yeah, we're, we're leaving, we're leaving a ton of trees. My other question is, is more of, again, one of my other questions, a major area of concern is I'm, I have a lot of hesitation with evaluating this project and not evalu evaluating the Southern part of the project at the same time. Is there, what's the reason for bringing them separately before council when both are going to interplay with regards, especially to Caddy Road? Well, I, I would just say that we are not the developer uh, for the other parcel. The meaning Comet is not the developer of the builder for the other parcel. Um, and I just think it's trailing behind in the approval process with, uh, with Cambridge uh, on uh, what goes in there next. Jay, maybe I should have let you handle that one. No, that, that's exactly right. I think our approach, uh, Councilman Dellinger, thank you for the question, uh, is to really uh, methodically uh, address uh, development. And that is not to push things, rush things, or not think through things and how they're developed, which is exactly why we were able to uh, come before your board last month with the Costco plan, commercial plan, plan across the street. This is the next component. Um, and then we will be following suit with the Caddy, uh, what we call Caddy South. Uh, that is a little bit of a less intense development than this. Um, it would, uh, our plan there is for some retail as well as some uh, townhome, maybe a for sale product there. The other thing that we're working through, and Jeff mentioned this in his presentation, is there's a lot of sewer uh, capacity uh, concerns in a downstream pump station that Raleigh Utilities uh, owns and controls. So we are working to figure out and determine, we have a, another call with Raleigh Utilities, exactly how much additional sewer capacity is available in that downstream pump station. So um, we don't want to bring before your board uh, plans that cannot be uh, um, served with uh, adequate utilities. So we have been assured by Raleigh Utilities the projects uh, last month as well as this one uh, can be served um, and we do not know 100% um, exactly on the capacities which would modify that site plan. 
I know that's a long answer and, and a very complicated one to a lot of moving parts. Um, but did I answer your question? You did. It's a very it's a good answer. Um, I guess it still gives me concern around the development and improvement of Caddy Road throughout the entire length of it, um, abutting this property and the southern side. Because to me, it doesn't make sense to if, let's say you can't rectify or get the capacity for sewage. You need to develop that other parcel. I'm concerned with having only half a Caddy Road, to, you know, brought up to standard. So. Um, I'll, I'll pass on to someone else for another question, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Singleton, I believe, is the one council member I haven't yet recognized on this. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Priester, uh, I, I cannot recall the answer to this question when we, uh, I believe, conditionally resumed this back last summer. Uh, on this property at the intersection of Caddy Road and US 401, there is a lot there, or it's distinguished on here in a lighter color than the. Uh, the natural space community amenity area shown is that a separate lot that uh can we develop for something else i cannot remember or is that i don't i don't remember what that lot may or may not be for sure good question right now um it is a different color because that area um will have some grading uh happen during this uh project and so it's shown there to show that we're not counting that as open space we don't have any plans and, and uh, uh, we'll let Seth answer that um, right now. Uh, yeah, you know, this, this, this is the finished product if we're able, you know, if we're approved, this is what will get built on that site. That light colored area would not get constructed. Okay, it is zoned the same. All this, everything in here is zoned the same, correct? That, that's the same zoning as what I was proposed tonight, correct? Yes. yes, the whole the whole property is owned in that too. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Singleton. I think I've covered all the uh, council members uh, at this point in time. So, uh, unless anybody has a follow up question, uh, Mr. Priester, I, I'm assuming though you've recognized the uh, persons you want to recognize for your presentation. Is that right? Anybody else? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay, sir. Um, all right. Um, well, thank you for the uh, able presentation. At this point, I will uh, either uh, see if um, Ms. Gibson is aware of anyone else who wants to speak on this issue, or I'll ask the question in general if we know of persons uh, otherwise who wish to speak at this time. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'm not aware of anyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Priester, unless you have other presentation, uh, I think that pretty well wraps up this particular hearing and I'm going to uh, uh, close the hearing and uh, ask the uh, council uh, for a motion on this matter. Okay, so I will- Mr. I'm Mayor, sorry, was... you're looking for a motion for the Ransville Real Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Mayor, I move that the council accept the uh, staff statements regarding plan consistency in section seven of this report as our own and find the application meets the 10 permit criteria, section 3.14.D, and therefore approve CUP SP 20 09, the Rand Village Apartments, with the four conditions to be listed on the permit that will be prepared by staff. Second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Singleton, and Mr. Matthews, I believe, was seconded the motion. So, uh, unless there are any final questions or comments, I will ask uh, the clerk to call the roll on the vote. Councilmember Dellinger? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Vance? Aye. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem Berenger. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, the motion uh, is passed on a vote of four to one. Um, and this is approved. I want to thank uh, Mr. Priester uh, for your able presentation and all of your uh, other experts who testified. Um, we wish you well as, uh, as this project moves forward and uh, hope it'll be a good addition to our area here, sir. Thank you. 
Mr. Mr. Priest, I again want to thank you for your detailed uh, PowerPoint presentations. I mentioned it at the last, uh, the retail presentation you made last month, and also we did the condition of rezoning. Uh, your presentations are spot on. They're very detailed, and I, I, I'll speak for myself. I appreciate the detail that you go into in presenting your uh, your projects. Thank you. I'll second that. I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you. Well you. You Thank can you. take that as a good compliment, Mr. Priester. I'm not sure I hear Mr. Singleton make those comments often, but I know it's well meaning, so uh, we appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, we will probably have to wait again very soon for the next. Okay, good. Thank you. And a good night to you all. We've still got some more business to conduct. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, I believe that covers all of. Um, our public hearing so i'm moving to the next item on the agenda which is item i under new and old business um let me find my place here i believe item two um uh, is the next item facility naming public comment uh this is an item that uh, well as it notes there at our december meeting uh the council uh, discussed uh, renaming the chambers after former mayor Ronnie Williams in keeping with the town's facility naming policy. And so this public hearing was designed for any comments uh, uh, from the public on this matter. Uh, but as we do that, I will recognize town manager uh, Rodney Dickerson uh, for any uh, uh, further presentation on this matter. Mr. Dickerson. Mayor Marshburn, members of council, um, as you stated, this is a follow-up process from the December 22nd. You, uh, Mr. Mayor, had appointed a committee to um, look into recommendations of how we could honor former Mayor Ronnie Williams. And um, as we did our work and um, thought about some of the ways we could honor him for his um, over 30 plus years of service to the town of Garner, representing the town on various committees, um, being an alderman, a council member, being a mayor, um, one of the things we thought would be um, um, becoming of his service would be uh, naming the council chambers. So as part of our, uh, our policy, it requires uh, public comment. And so that's where we are now. And we do have um, support from the family. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dickerson. And so, um, uh, I have not been contacted with uh, by anyone who, who uh, indicated they wanted to uh, speak this evening. Um, Ms. Gibson, have you been notified uh, of anyone on this matter? No, sir, I have not. Okay. Um, I will at this time ask council members if there's any further uh, comment or question uh, that anyone uh, would like to ask at this point in time. Mr. Mayor, I, I would point out that uh, I think we may have mentioned this when we talked in December, but a couple of uh, things that was discussed by the committee, and of course nothing set in stone, is that as you approach the council chambers down the hallway, it says council chambers, and I think it was discussed putting one uh, Mayor Williams' name up there, and then in the council chambers itself, uh, uh, also having uh, some type of signage noting it was uh, named for Mayor Williams, but also uh, having an information panel, I think maybe a smaller version of the ones that we see on the first and second floor of town hall, uh, which were done with the, uh, the glass panels and the, the pictures, uh, having a, a, a one of those or something similar to that in town hall with, with Mayor Williams' picture on it and also uh, some information uh, about his uh, his service to the town of Garner and the, the, the numerous roles that he played. So that was what was discussed. And again, the council can you know choose to do that or do something else. But that was that was what was discussed at one time. Um, so that way, people would know when they enter the council chambers, is the, the Ronnie S. Williams Council Chambers, and also it will be uh, uh, noted inside the cha the chambers itself also. Okay. Yes. Thank you uh, for those uh, excellent points, uh, Mr. Singleton, and. Um... Uh, I would say to council that um, I'm going to ask formally for a vote uh, approval to move ahead. And to Mr. Singleton's point, I think the committee maybe can get back together with uh, what I would call some uh, logistical details and, and sort of fleshing out some of the things Mr. Singleton mentioned and bring back to council for final approval 
uh, exactly what we expect to do uh, in chambers and, and ask your final approval on that. So if council has any other comments or questions on this matter, I'd be happy to hear them at this time. Okay, uh, hearing none, then um, I would entertain a motion. And, and thank you, by the way, I, I commend council. I think this is an excellent way to uh, recognize uh, a person who gave a lot of service and uh, uh, most everybody here knows him well. I had the privilege of serving with him for 12 years as a council member. And uh, I think this is a, is a great way to honor his memory. So uh, we'll ask for a, a motion from council to, to approve uh, the action that has been recommended with a final recommendation to be coming after the committee meets again. So moved. Second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. Any question? Hearing none, I will ask the um, clerk to call the roll. If you approve, please say aye. Or disapprove. Councilmember Dellinger. Aye. Councilmember Matthews. Aye. Councilmember Singleton. Aye. Councilmember Vance. Councilmember Vance. I believe you, you've muted Aye. yourself. Yeah, thank you. And Mayor Pro Tem Berenger. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So it proved, it's approved unanimously, and we will uh, we'll get the committee back together and hopefully bring some, some final um, presentation on the matter and uh, some cost estimates and so forth for what we propose to do. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, the next item of business uh, under this uh, section of our agenda, I believe, is a second quarter budget update. And be pleased to recognize uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Franks, our budget special projects manager. There he is. Mr. Franks, we cannot hear you yet, or I cannot. It would help if I unmuted myself. I apologize for that. Yeah, much better. We hear you now, sir. <laughs> All right, so my first presentation tonight is on the second quarter budget update. I provided our first quarter budget update several months ago, and this is in response to the uncertain times that COVID-19 presented in terms of putting together the budget. So we came back and said that we would provide quarterly updates. This is the second one of those. So I'm going to provide an overview on current financial trends, provide a recommendation, and also I would welcome discussion throughout the presentation. So for just the history again, um, as part of the budget we did, um, based on the uncertain nature of COVID-19, we prepared a worst case budget, which included significant expenditure of revenue projections. Um, council and staff agreed that quarterly updates would be provided to make any necessary adjustments. So basically because we went worst case, if things ended up being better or perhaps worse, uh, what adjustments would be needed. In this Part of current update, uh, we did reach out to departments to determine if any adjustments were required. So we have factored in kind of what departments' needs are and their one-term requirements, one-time requirements. So this is a summary that provides a review of the current revenue trends. So a couple of takeaways here: uh, the sales tax numbers completely advanced above what we were recommended or what we thought was going to be included in the budget. We are currently projecting for an additional one point. Eight five million in sales tax and other taxes, um, and that is primarily just based on the fact that sales tax continues to grow at seven eight percent above uh, month over month from the prior year, and that's before COVID. So we are growing at the same rate sales tax wise as we were pre COVID, um, which is just something nobody expected. This is being offset by decreases in programming fees and interest earnings or investment earnings. So programming fees is primarily Parks and Rec. Um, and just the lack of programming there. And then investment earnings, the um, <coughs> current interest rates are significantly lower than we originally anticipated. So we are seeing significantly less in terms of uh, um, being able to benefit from our, uh, our portfolio. In terms of expenditure trends, um, we are currently projecting $650,000 less than budgeted. A significant amount of that is in works and cultural resources. And that is based primarily on Again, the lack of programming, that department generally has a significant number of limited term staff. 
time to provide the programming and help out throughout the year. Those staff are not being hired based on the fact that we're no longer doing those activities, so there's a significant amount of savings there. And then we have some what I would call miscellaneous savings in other departments that get us to the $650,000 number. So based on this, staff does have some recommendations based on the fact that we are positive in revenue and seeing lower expenditures. Staff is recommending that council consider the approval of full-time public safety IT position. Uh, this position is currently being performed by a part-time employee that is scheduled to depart on June 30th. So that was something that council approved a couple of years ago. Um, primarily helped the police department with their, some of their IT requirements. That part-time staff member is scheduled to leave June 30th and the workload associated with performing IT functions with just police at this point um, Married a full-time position that would obviously increase even more with a merger and this would allow also with the approval of this for several months of knowledge transfer which is critical for this position so because that person the incumbent is leaving on June 30th if we were going to be able to approve a position um, in the next couple of weeks months that would allow the IT department to then hire that person and spend some time with the incumbent to make sure that they are aware of what's going on and the FY21 cost would be approximately $30,000 and could be absorbed by the IT department based on some staff departures. So there would be no current year cost. However, the net recurring cost would be approximately $30,000. So there'd be two um, adjustments here. We'd be putting additional money into the IT department to cover the cost of the new IT position, but we would also have some savings in the police department because they currently house the part-time position. So that position would be going away. So we would just be covering the difference, which would be approximately that $50,000. In addition, staff recommends the approval of a net zero funding adjustment associated with the pay equity study. This would be something we bring back to you um, on the consent agenda. And it would be just moving the funding around. As, as you recall, when we put together the adopted budget. Um, we did not have the final information on the study. and There were ultimately some changes. So based on those changes, staff would be, staff is going to need to move some money around essentially uh, with no new cost. It would just be moving it in between departments. So that'd be, um, that would require a, a budget amendment. So with that, I'll take any questions the council has on the uh, revenue expenditure trends and also staff's recommendations. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. And just so I'm clear, you are recommending or asking council to uh, go ahead and approve this full-time uh, public uh, safety position. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir, to at least provide feedback on um, your overall thoughts on the position's need and give staff some direction in terms of what additional information would be required for you guys to finalize your decision. Um, obviously, this is just a high-level overview, but um, any information you would need to, to make a final decision. Okay, sir. All right, Council, I'll ask you to weigh in on the information received uh, from Mr. Franks. Let's start with Mr. Matthews. I'm having questions right now, Mr. Mayor. I'm interested in what some other input might be. Okay. Uh, Ms. Beringer? I have no questions. It's a good, clear presentation, easily understood. Okay. Uh, Mr. Singleton? Uh, so is staff looking for a motion on this uh, converting from a part-time full full-time position tonight or is this coming on the consent agenda? I know with with uh, who we have there now leaving June 30th, you want to move on this sooner than later. And I didn't know a consent agenda would be two more meetings, uh, excuse me, two more weeks. And so I don't, I don't know if that's what you're looking. I, I think it's, you know, incumbent to realize that police is about 40% of our full-time employees, maybe more but the IT involved in that every police vehicle has cameras, the police have body cameras, they have computers inside the uh, every vehicle, uh, plus the way they enter all violations, uh, tickets and so forth and information. Uh, they're, they're, I know the whole town hall is IT heavy, but uh, what police, the technology, which has evolved and will continue to evolve in that is, uh, uh, it's a full-time job for someone managing that. So I have no trouble. I, I don't know what direction. Do you want us to wait for a consent agenda, or do you want us to make a motion to ask you to move forward and bring us more information? What, what is staff looking for? I would think it makes sense if you guys are comfortable going and just going ahead and um, going with the motion route and as opposed to waiting until the consent agenda. But I will also defer to um, the town manager or the assistant town managers if they have a different opinion. I think it would be appropriate if the council is in favor, because with the departure of the existing um, part-time employee June the 30th, 
we would we do not want to see a lag in this position so it will take time to um, advertise and um, interview and do those type of things and we'd like to have that in, in place before the end of the uh, the year okay I was just going to say, uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, what I believe you're ready to do. If you will, let me let me recognize the other two council members who to, to weigh in on this, and then we will certainly consider a motion at that time. Okay. I will. Everybody spoke. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Vance, uh, any comments, uh, observations you care to make, sir? Well, it just appears that uh, the need is there. Uh, don't have any objections to the recommendation or request. Okay, and Mr. Dellinger. Uh, I don't have any objection to that request. I, I do have one question that it might, it might have gotten answered at the last quarterly mm -hmm. update, and I don't remember what it was. Um, what is the explanation on that 80% decrease in investment earnings, that negative $350,000? Like, can, how is that broken out? I'm having a hard time understanding how our investments have shriveled from our projections like that. Um, so I think we were just overly being overly optimistic in terms of what we thought interest rates were going to be. Um, and that's the primary factor. Um, I would defer to Mr. Beck if he has any thoughts on it as well. But I mean, I think we just, we were overly conservative with sales tax in terms of thinking that it would go down and didn't fully recognize the fact that our interest earnings would go down dramatically. They, they've been at this level before in the past, but it's been several years of strong growth. And I just don't think we foresaw as staff that it would be quite this traumatic in terms of. I'm just, I, I guess I'm just looking at, you know, at the actual in 2019, 2020 of 534,000 and in the current estimate for this year is 100,000. So I'm just curious, is that all just interest earnings on, on, money we have in the bank and the interest rates mm -hmm. have plummeted to absolutely near nothing. Is that what that is? It is. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's just cash sitting, not earning because yeah, it's our all, all the cuts. Okay. Okay. It's longer getting good interest rates. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. believe everybody has weighed in. Um, so uh, you've heard the request or Mr. Frank's explanation and from the town manager in regards to the preference to, uh, to go ahead and uh, get this full-time position, uh, make it available. So unless there are other discussions, I will call for a motion at this time. Mr. Mayor, I move that we direct staff uh, to uh, change a part-time public safety IT position to a full-time public safety IT position, uh, effective as soon as they can hire uh, a new employee. Second. Okay. Okay, motion properly made by Mr. Singleton and seconded by uh, Mr. Matthews. Any other comment before we vote? Hearing none, um, Mr. Clerk, I will ask you to call the roll on this motion, please. Okay, we have a motion properly before us. So Ms. Gibson, are you available? Are you there? Muted right now, Stella. She's taking the nine o'clock break, Mr. Mayor. That's what's going I'm on. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which will be next? Did, 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 did I hear her voice there somewhere? Yeah. Okay, Councilmember Matthews. Uh, aye. Councilmember Singleton. Aye. Councilmember Vance. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Derringer. Aye. And Councilmember Dellinger. Aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously and uh, is approved. Thank you, uh, Council. Thank you, uh, Mr. Franks. I know you have the next presentation and- uh, Mr. Mayor, um, if I may say something real quick about the last item. Okay. That we will be bringing back some formalities um, as far as the position control, so back on probably consent, because that position is gonna have to be placed on our paid plan and those type of things. So. So I just want to let you know, you will see some formalities associated with that in the future. Okay. Thank so you, you, Mr. Manager. You know, I thought we already voted on that, so. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm inclined to call a brief recess, even though Mr. Franks, I know, has a another presentation to make. Um, uh, how, how long do you think that will take, Mr. Franks? I don't want you to rush, necessarily. 
not extremely long. It's just going over next year's budget calendar and kind of giving a brief overview. Okay. So teeing up the next year's budget. All right. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and let Mr. Franks finish his presentations, and then I will suggest to council that we will take a brief recess to let everybody be refreshed. So, Mr. Franks, if you will proceed at this time with the second item there. All right, Mr. Mayor, members of council, at the same time, we're reviewing the current year budget, FY21. We're also starting the process of preparing for the FY22 budget. So here tonight, I'm going to give an overview of some background on what happened last year, just some high-level information on FY22, and then also ultimately the calendar an overview of budget challenges in the process, review some key dates, and have some discussions throughout. So FY21 in review, we had the obviously significant uncertainty based on COVID-19. We utilized the multi-year budget to review the town's long-term financial outlook. So this was something we continued to expand upon where we had a pretty basic model and we added additional elements and really started to utilize that to really fully think through um, the next five years and how um, that service was going to ultimately impact that bond referendum and the operating needs and kind of putting everything together. We ultimately adopted a budget that included a tax rate of 49.71 per $100 of assessed value, which was an increase of three and a above the revenue neutral rate. And the budget included funding for various initiatives, including public safety initiatives, um, the funding to implement the pay equity study, Current funding to perform the public facilities repair and maintenance, so the ability for us to maintain our current assets as we start the process of building new ones, and also one time funding to prepare for the November 2021 bond referendum. And that was set aside so that we could do some additional analysis to figure out exactly how much things were going to cost, have some better cost estimates going into the referendum so that we could uh, be better positioned to succeed in the future. The FY22 outlook. And this is very preliminary. We have not yet received any estimates from Wake County about our real estate, and that is the biggest chunk of it. Um, but we do believe current baseline forecast indicates that current revenue should be sufficient to cover the baseline requirements. Again, this is preliminary. Um, we'll be refined in the coming months after we get some information from Wake County on real estate. We should be able to provide a much more detailed forecast of what we expect next year and future years. We do, however, anticipate that there'll be multiple competing priorities based on population growth and just uh, pent up demand. We had a variety of decision packages last year, funding requests for new positions that were not funded ultimately. So I would anticipate a variety of those to come back. And then we have increased workload associated with population increases. So you're seeing departments like police, um, maybe parks, more service, service oriented departments that are being impacted by the development activity that we started to see. So I would anticipate some additional growth there. In the FY22 process, we will continue to utilize the multi-year approach and utilize some of the processes of prior years. So I would anticipate that we would continue to utilize that model as we go through the bond referendum, uh, making sure that we're balancing um, needs of the current um, current budget year as well as the future. We will focus hopefully on refining the forecast and the funding recommendations to make sure they align with council's long-term vision. As you may recall, last year we had a couple items that were pretty broad focused on you know six positions in future years we did not have a significant amount of detail so um, part of the goal there is to be able to lay out an additional detail what we actually think are going to be needed in the future um, and we will have to go back and forth on how much detail we're able to provide because things obviously do change but we at least want to have some idea of what may come up in the future um, based on council's priorities and as always is the case the primary goal will be to adequately address current years while establishing a framework for the future so it's just some high level information on the budget process. Departments are tasked with providing a baseline budget. So that's all the things that they're gonna need in this year's budget, just paper, training on various things along those lines. So there's the, the nuts and bolts of what is required to operate their department, as well as a, as a five-year staffing model and any significant five-year operating impacts for review. So basically what's the big stuff coming up, personnel and operating, and then what do you need this current year? the town's budget team, which includes myself, budget uh, manager, the deputy town managers, um, the town manager and the finance director, then review the operating budget and current your decision packages, as well as the revenue estimates to come up with a budget. And the multi-year request are reviewed as part of the multi-year budget as well. 
So more detail, departments enter based on funding requirements, it's the town's financial system. So they go ahead and are doing that currently, looking at what they need and entering all their information in. This allows the budget team and departments to review the current year request prior to actuals at the same time. So this was something that I highlighted in the past because we went to actually entering all that information into units, the town's financial system, which allowed us to have significantly more detail um, as a benefit, something that we will hopefully expand on in the future. And then the decision packages are also reviewed departments and ranked based on established criteria. So there's a variety of different criteria that department heads had an opportunity to weigh in on that we use to rate decision packages. And this is just a high level overview of what the, the budget system pops out. So you can see um, on the left hand side, various items, operating items. Um, and then you can see the actual, so what was actually occurred, what actually was spent and then the current year budget, current year revised budget, and then the request. So it allows you to have a single snapshot that uh, makes it simpler to review the budget request. The multi-year budget in FY22, we will continue to utilize recent trends, current projections to determine based on revenue expenditure growth. So for example, with sales tax, we were projecting a significant decline this year. Now we're experiencing growth. So something like that will have a fairly big impact on the multi-year budget. Um, however, we'd also have to probably offset that with some interest earning decreases. So it's reevaluating everything based on the current climate and making those changes. Also, we use the multi-year staff model, CIP, and other knowledge to um, highlight upcoming initiatives issues. And as always, the goal will be to review future projects initiatives, in fact, an operating budget, so the framework can be built that will hopefully ultimately set up a roadmap for success. With that, I will just go to the schedule, <clears throat> try to keep it pretty high level in terms of the date. So we have various dates where I'll, somebody will be presenting to council in terms of, for example, the first one's a CIP bond update, which will occur on the 26th, and then a variety of other, other dates, um, big ones for council to ultimately look at. One thing we've talked about, um, we felt worked a lot well last year is having individual budget meetings with council members. So we have that highlighted for March 29th through April 2nd. That'd be an opportunity for staff to provide some input on what the budget was overall looking like, get some one-on-one -on -one feedback from council. Um, using that information, we'd ultimately have the recommended budget presented to council on May 3rd. We don't have a budget review all day session plans just yet, but that would be another all day long session. We're gonna continue with the Facebook live event on the budget. We had some decent success with that last year. We wanna continue with that avenue and give people as many opportunities as possible to comment on the budget a public hearing in May on the 18th, and then ultimately council adoption was um, recommended on the 7th of June. So with that, I'll take any comments or questions on the process generally, the schedule, or any other things related to the FY22 budget. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Frank. Sure enough, uh, high level view of things here. Um, rather than formally polling council on this, I will ask uh, council members have particular questions for Mr. Franks if you'll uh, speak up and we'll see if we need to go around to everybody. Any questions from council? Okay, Mr. Frank, uh, thank you, sir, for your, for your time. Uh, you, you must have done quite well. Uh, there were no questions. Uh, I, have, I do have one, I have one, I have one. Oh, I just, before we okay. get to the work session, uh, before we get to the work session on the 26th, can we get kind of this bond update draft so that we kind of have an idea going in what that conversation is going to look like before we get to our work session yes i can have that um and then i think there's also potentially going to be some follow-up at your retreat I, I would defer to the town manager and deputies or assistant okay. town managers on that so it would be you know you guys having that information the 26th and then maybe having some time to consider it and then discussing it again at the retreat so um there will not be a you know it's not going to be a hard decision to make it easy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sir. Okay. Yes, one, you. One, question, one question uh, my name is the mayor from Michael. Are you, as you projected the sales tax to uh, continue to increase, uh, ba uh, based on the information that we had in here, you've only received sales tax for, I believe, July, August, and September of uh, last year for, for the, the first the first quarter of, of uh, well, no, that's, yeah, the first quarter of last year, that's all that you received sales tax number for one, correct? You may have received October. Um, 
I don't believe that we have though. But um, but the projections are based off those percentage increases over what what we budgeted for. Uh, that you have plugged that in here for the increase. Yes, sir. We yeah, with those projections, that's factored into the increase. And what we're ultimately seeing with sales tax, and I'm thinking you're referring to the last presentation, is that a lot of the population hubs are actually being negative, more negatively impacted by COVID-19. So the Raleigh's, the Durham's um, are being harder hit. And some of the smaller municipalities or more rural areas are having pretty good growth. And the thought is that people are staying home um, and buying stuff in a garner or wherever they happen to live, as opposed to stopping and shopping at a grocery store. So um, that's what we're seeing and thinking is happening with. So it'll probably continue throughout uh, COVID, and then we would expect it to, or I would expect it to continue to happen just based on um, overall growth in the town. So um, that's that's my overall thought in terms of sales tax. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes, sir. I do I have one quick question about the sales tax too. The the overage we're seeing now is that based against the decreased expectation we had, or is it in line with what we expected without COVID? It's based on the decrease that we expected. It, things okay, are so going as as if COVID never happens. Is essentially okay. we're staying about the same growth rate. Gotcha. That was that answers that question. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, Council, you satisfied on this matter? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Frank, um, um, for this presentation, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you um, in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Council. Um, I'm going to suggest that uh, we take a uh, our nine o'clock uh, recess at this point in time and observe that uh, since most of you, I think, are operating from a place that you're very familiar with, it shouldn't take you long to find uh, what you need to find during the break uh, rather than wander the halls of the uh, town hall up here finding those things. So I'm going to suggest that we uh, uh, no more than 10 minutes, if you can be back uh, at least by that time, uh, nine that looks like 925 or so, and we will wrap up the rest of our agenda. So uh, thank you all, and this time I'll declare a 10 minute recess. Okay, I'm going to declare that our recess is over and we are back in uh, formal session and uh, picking up on our, and thank each of you for being prompt and timely, I appreciate that. Um, we're now at the section on our agenda under item J, which is committee reports. Um, and before I call on others, I will note that uh, this maybe is what we call a semi-committee um today miss Beringer and i along with uh, the town manager uh, met with um our um, school of government uh, facilitator to talk some about the um upcoming retreat and uh uh miss Beringer, you want to give any details on that just in regards to uh what's well i guess we're to give the dates uh, mr manager maybe you already sent those out uh, the proposed dates for our retreat and know you were going to send some more information after we get a, an agenda from the facility. Yes, the dates right now proposed and I think everybody's cleared it on their calendar February the 10th and 11th. Okay. Likely go about six hours on the 10th and roughly um, four hours or so on the 11th. Still working out some of those details. Okay, and obviously this will be a virtual meeting um, which will be unlike other retreats we've had, but that's the uh, format it'll take this this time around, sure enough. So unless uh, others have uh, questions on that, I will ask, are there any other committee reports at this time? Okay, hearing none, I will recognize the uh, town manager for uh, uh, his report to council. Okay, Mayor, town council have a number of reports. Um, you have your standard reports in there. Uh, Except for the Garner info, we failed to get that in your packet, so we will get a copy of that to you um, tomorrow. Uh, but we will continue to work on those items. Um, there's a financial report and the building activity report in there. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is, um, you know, with COVID, we've pivoted to having shows, GPAC at Home series, we call it, 
where we have um, artists perform and some perform live and we film it or either they may um, stream it from a remote location. Um, nevertheless, it's quality programming and something we want to continue to bring to our public. And um, on Thursday, the 21st, um, we're going to have our own former um, Garner Chamber President Neil Paget is teaming with Mary Wilson for a tribute to Mahalia Jackson. I mean, uh, yes, Mahalia Jackson. And um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, there's going to be several other shows um, following that. Uh, probably following like every other Thursday or so, um, but just go online to the GPAC website and uh, look at your calendar. But um, we're really excited about the show coming up on Thursday. Uh, Mary Williams is an adjunct professor, um, kind of a, a documentarian and um, storyteller, uh, adjunct professor at Duke. Um, so we're real excited to have her um, teaming up with Mr. Uh, Paget on that. Um, the other thing we have here um, at request of Council Member Berenger, and I don't know if she wants to cover anything on here, but you have in your packet a report, Fire Department 2020 by the numbers, is various stats on the uh, Garner Fire Rescue Department and um, number of calls and some of just kind of pertinent information of how their year has gone, uh, number of responses, call volume. Is, oh, let me pause there and see if uh, Council Member Berenger wanted to say anything about it before I go into any details or if you want to cover anything as a liaison. Ms. Berenger, we can't hear you at this point. You're on mute. Try to be quiet. Now uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing fine, Rodney. I think it's always helpful to have uh, actual facts in front of you about what is happening, uh, you know, everybody thinks that in terms of the sirens and fire calls, but actually more of their calls are medical calls than anything else. And so it's good to see those numbers, see what they're doing, where they're working, and, and to understand that they are truly working just about all the time. So I uh, thought you would appreciate that information. So just to throw out um, some of the information for our viewers, um, so the the Garner Fire Rescue, they cover a population of 64,700. Um, so it's well beyond the Garner Town limits. And as you know, they cover a lot of the um, surrounding uh, unincorporated area. Uh, the call volume was 5,500. Um, that included uh, 65 structure fires, uh, 32 vehicle fires, um, which keeps them busy, especially on the highway and the roads surrounding Garner. Uh, brush fires and um, electrical calls, uh, 610 traffic accidents. And as um, Mayor Pro Tem Berenger mentioned, a lot of their calls are as first responder medical calls, and they did um, almost 2,800 of those. So they um, spend a lot of time on response, but they also do um, some training and some things for um, prevention. So uh, this information is available in the council member packet. So. If you want to um, take a look at that, you can see um, how busy of a year it was for the um, fire department. All right, moving on from that, wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Roy Lance. He wanted to give you an update on one of the events um, from the Garner Parks and Rec Department. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Um, just wanted to let you all know that uh, the, the Parks Department is, is thinking ahead to events or at least what our traditional events would have looked like in the spring and, and summer and coming up with some alternatives instead. Um, July 3rd will still be the, the big one to figure out and we're not quite ready for that conversation but uh, we do think it's um, just un very unlikely that we would be able to do extravaganza in the way that we typically would and so uh, what we are proposing to do in the spring is um, capitalize a little bit on the success that we had with the drive-in movie that we did in the in the fall at Lake Benson Park that went really well and so we are proposing to do a um, a monthly uh, series throughout the spring uh, one second Friday of the month March April May and June uh, the drive-in movie series that would work you know similar to how it did in the fall that like I said that that proved to be successful and pretty popular and we think that's a good you know, it's, it's a good alternative, and particularly if we could go ahead and publicize the events 
uh, you know, further ahead of time and that it would be on a set schedule, we think we'll get real good turnout. So um, that's what we're that's what we're proposing to do for the uh, sort of in, to take the place of extravagance and to, to give the, the residents of the town something to look forward to from a parks and rec standpoint over the next few months while we figure out what it will look like in the summer and beyond. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Manager. Anything else? Right. Um, so the other thing I want to remind you of um, is that the MLK presentation is still available online on our um, social media and our Facebook and YouTube platforms. And I want to thank the MLK committee. Um, I want to thank Rick and Adam for all the good work they did in making that virtual program very successful. Um, some community members participated in that, the mayor. And um, it was a very good program. And um, I think it's it's um, very well worth watching. So if you haven't watched it yet, go online and watch that. And that's it for my presentation. Okay, anybody have a question for the uh, town manager in regards to this report? Okay, hearing none. Um, Attorney Jones, any report? No, I'm going to give you my report during closed session this evening. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I will go to council reports uh, and I'll start with um, Ms. Beringer. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, there is, uh, I believe the address is either is 102 and 104 or 104 and 106 West Garner Road. It's a duplex uh, on the corner of West Garner Road and Penny Street and the driveway off of West Garner Road into that property uh, has no gravel in it and so it's full of water and red mud and there's red mud all over the sidewalk. I did talk with Tony Beasley um, last week about it, but haven't heard back from him. But um, they need to contact the property owner and get that driveway, have some gravel put in it to stop that uh, erosion and, and the mud that people are having to walk in on the sidewalk over there. Um, second thing is, uh, I, my memory serves me correctly, it's maybe even a couple of years ago by now, but we approved some new planning, the uh, council will approve some new planning so software and I wanted to see if that had been implemented and what uh, what the improvement was. Um, I don't I just remember that our planning software was uh, was out of date and that we did approve getting a new I don't know what to call it but a new program and I wonder if we have done that yet. Uh, Ms. Berenger this is John I can uh, address that. No we are um, we've done part of the pre-work um, to evaluate that software. We've um, done some process mapping, um, trying to do that at the same time as the comprehensive plan was getting completed and then starting the UDO rewrite um, was just really too much for staff to take on at one time. So we've picked back up on trying to restart that project. We had a meeting uh, two weeks ago or last week rather. Um, and so we've got monthly meetings scheduled to, to work on that initiative now. Um, the other thing we were doing as well was that Wake County and Raleigh were implementing software um, at the time you were approving that and they both had some pretty severe challenges in getting that rolled out. So we're also taking some lessons learned from what they a couple of other our peers um, who've had a more successful rollout that will be able to pattern uh, some of that work after. So we're working on it, but um, we, we have not implemented the software yet. Do you have a projected time frame to get it in, in place? Um, I don't. A lot of that's really going to depend on the amount of bandwidth the staff has um, because it's going to be fairly um, heavy in terms of staff having to pull away from their regular responsibilities to make sure that, that we're developing the processes b before we implement it. So I really don't have a good timeline until we understand more of, of, of what some of those requirements are going to be. Okay. All right, thank you. And that's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Singleton, be happy to hear from you, sir. I have nothing new this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Ma Matthews, are you there? Uh, I had caught Kathy's dueling. Okay. Nothing at this time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And Mr. Vance. What? 
Mr. Vance, anything? Yes. Uh, yes, I would just say that the MLK uh, virtual celebration um, really enjoyed it. It was well, well done. And uh, I have a slight concern about the trash that I'm noticing on the side of the roads lately. Uh, it appears that it's, there's becoming a buildup of trash along several several thoroughfares, uh, 170 from Timber, uh, Timber going toward um, uh, Rand Road, that area and just it's it probably because of a lot of construction and another a lot of travel and things of that nature but just want to know if, if there is a way of, of taking care of that knowing that we have all these all these activities going on such as construction one of with the new housing development the things going on a lot of trucks on the road a lot of things are blowing around okay thank you sir and i might just mention uh, maybe the staff I'm wondering if we could perhaps make that a point of discussion at our closed session. Um, I know of at least one and maybe two people who are just uh, good citizens who, as they're out walking, they, they take along with them trash receptacles and bags. And I know one gentleman who uh, he accumulates quite a bit of trash. And the question is, uh, you know, where's a good place to leave those bags and so forth. So at any rate, I think that uh, that, General topic deserves some further discussion. Uh, maybe, uh, Mr. Manager, if we could just uh, put put that on uh, for some further discussion at our, I'm going to suggest for our work session. Um, so, um, let me see, uh, Mr. Dellinger, for a report, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I want to. Uh, thank the town manager and Sam Bridges and all of our county commissioners um, last week for being very responsive with regards to uh, getting information on uh, vaccines and, and that stuff. I know there's a lot of moving parts, um, but I want to commend um, them, especially for um, reaching out to folks to make sure they know that Garner will help. However, we need to help to make sure we can facilitate that if the time comes. So they're, I say that all that information is in flux, but um, uh, everyone seems to understand we, we, we really would like that in Garner. I um, also want to thank the Public Information Office and the Police Department had a constituent reach out to me about a week and a half ago um, asking if we had a safe exchange spot for people who, you know, would meet people online to buy and sell things. And um, they posted we have one in front of the police station. Uh, Rick posted that up and the police posted that up and it got a lot of feedback. So hopefully some awareness was raised with that. Um, also want to congratulate the police department and choose local and small y'all for the coats event they did this weekend. Really successful. I know we, we threw a few coats in there, but that seemed to be really great. Um, and also let's see. Uh, I saw some work going out in the park over in JC. I didn't walk there and there to see, but it looks like they're putting in new equipment. So um, thanks for the Parks and Rec and Public Works for doing that. Um, I just reiterate what other folks have said about the Martin Luther King uh, video. Um, it's worth a watch, especially in uh, these times. It's a good thing to um, look at. Um, in that spirit, uh, there have been a few municipalities in the sunsetting of HB 142 that have put forth town ordinances related to uh, LBGTQ non-discrimination ordinances and policies. Um, the ncready.org gives the sort of website that's tracking that. But if, if it would, you know, please the mayor and council, I'd like to have the town manager and uh, law town attorney look at maybe drafting some language for us for a similar ordinance for um, LGB LGBTQ uh, non-discrimination uh, policies for the town. Uh, I, I think, you know, we're, we're we kind of want to live what we are. I think we have a great community and I think it's, it's a thing that we can really get behind as far as being an inclusive town and supporting all of our neighbors um, and making sure they have um, even symbolic protections, which uh, hopefully that's all it would need to be in Garner. Uh, but if it would please the council and mayor, I'd love for the town manager and the town attorney to look at some of the ord other ordinances that were drafted and, and kind of draft some for us to consider 
Um, I know there's a whole process for that, but, um, and that's all I have. Okay. Um, yeah. And, 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 and on that matter, that probably, uh, merits, uh, some, some further discussion of, uh, moving forward on that. So, uh, um, perhaps that might could be an item for the, the, uh, work session. I'm not sure, but, uh, um, let's, let's leave that open for a potential discussion at that time. Um, yeah, I think most of you have mentioned the things I want to mention. Certainly want to come in as uh, Mr. Dellinger did and maybe somebody else, the, uh, police department on there. Uh, I, I, I call it, uh, what is it? Coats for the cause or whatever, but, uh, did a tremendous job on that and received proper recognition. And I appreciate the, uh, the message sent out, I believe, by uh, uh, Kyber, um, uh, thanking uh, many people who participated in that. Um, also, as it relates to, uh, yeah, uh, the COVID-19 and the vaccinations, uh, I know we've sent out a public information uh, uh, from our PIO, which was good. There's still a lot of questions about that. I had the privilege of speaking to the uh, chairman of county commissioners and uh, personally uh, asking him if there's a possibility of the town of Garner uh, having some kind of a vaccination site here. I think he said he'd already heard from Mr. Dellinger. And so um, that that's that's on the table. He indicated uh, he would try to get back to me on that. So uh, a lot of people are interested in sites. Uh, I know there are places you can go online. I believe my wife did today and many places are trying to schedule appointments, obviously. So um, I'm sure the town, as we receive additional information, will uh, will push that on out. Uh, so keep a look on your social media and other platforms that you use for information about the town. Uh, with that, I believe that's all I have. Uh, thank you, Council. This is our first virtual meeting for a while, uh, since we had some earlier. Uh, I think we'll need to continue these for a little while, but we will be constantly reevaluating uh, when circumstances are re uh, relating COVID-19 might merit uh, some loosening of the rules, um, but it's too early just yet, I believe. Um, so with that, I believe we finished our regular agenda. We do have at least one closed session. Uh, so uh, having finished council reports, I will entertain a motion uh, for us to uh, go into closed session. Mr. Mayor, pursuant to NC General Statute Section 143-318.11, subset A, subset 3, to consult with the town attorney regarding litigation in Section 143-318-11, subset A, subset 5, to discuss possible real estate acquisition and the town's negotiating position regarding such real estate. Okay, you've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, um, Ms. Gibson, would you call the roll just on this, I guess? Yes, sir. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Vance? Aye. Councilmember Verringer? Aye. Councilmember Dellinger? Aye. Councilmember Matthews? Aye. Okay, the motion is approved, and so I will declare that we will. Um, uh, go into closed session and we if the uh, council will be at ease until we can um, receive uh, notification uh, uh, from our tech people as to when we're ready to Okay, um, I declare that we're back in open session. The uh, council went into closed session to um, uh, consult with our town attorney and receive information uh, regarding litigation. Uh, no formal action is taken at this time. We also uh, uh, heard from town staff regarding uh, possible real estate acquisition and uh, the town's uh, uh, interest in possibly pursuing that. and. Uh, gave staff some instruction, but no formal action was taken in that regard at this time. So uh, with that, I want to thank the council for your good work tonight. It's been kind of a long night, but accomplished a lot. And so um, unless anybody has anything else for the good of the council, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. 
So moved. Thank you. Okay, moved and properly seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And there is no opposition. So uh, again, declare our meeting adjourned and we'll see you at our closed session later this month. Thank you all for your good service. Thank you.